Okay, now we're going to talk about determination of rate loss. This is chapter 17, section 4 of physical chemistry. So this has to be done experimentally. Let's say we have a rate of a reaction is equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of A to the alpha power times the concentration of B to the beta power, etc., all the way to L to the lambda power. Now, how do we determine these values for alpha, beta, lambda, and so on? And, of course, the rate constant K. Well, one is what we call the half-life method. Let's say that um, we have A amount of substance A going to one or more products. Then we could say the rate is equal to R is equal to K times the concentration of A to the N. So if N is equal to 1, then the half-life is independent of the initial concentration of A. Now, if N is not equal to the 1, then the half-life is equal to 2 to the N minus 1 minus 1 times N minus 1 times the initial concentration of A to the N minus 1 power times K. Now, we're going to take the logarithm, natural log, no, just the regular log of that um, equation. So we get the log of the half-life is equal to the log of 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 over n minus 1 times k minus n minus 1 log of the initial concentration of a. So now we have a, slide, a straight line of a slope y-intercept format. So here we are. Here's a graph of the log of the half-life versus the log of the initial concentration of a. So the slope is going to be 1 minus n as long as n is not equal to 1, of course. So, let's say we have um, some data points here. So we have the half-life, here's concentration of a naught. So for the half-life prime, that would be one point on this graph. Then we have a naught, and then a naught divided by 2. And then for another point on the graph, we have the half-life double prime with a different initial concentration, another half-life. So we do this experiment, each of these are different runs of an experiment, starting out with different concentrations of A, initial concentrations of A. So we get different half-lives to graph. So again, minus N minus 1 is the slope of that line up there. And of course this won't work if N is equal to 1. So the logarithm of the concentra initial concentration of A is the X value, or uh, variable for the slope y-intercept format line. Another way is called the fractional life method, or T sub alpha. So we're going to say T sub alpha is the time required for the initial concentration of A to drop to alpha times the initial concentration of A. So it's like a half-life, but it might be more like 40% or 30% or 90% or whatever is convenient. So like for the half-life, of course, then alpha is one-half. So alpha is going to be the concentration of A divided by the initial concentration of A. So obviously alpha has to be between 0 and 1. Um, alpha is usually about 0 0.75. So R is equal to K times the concentration of A to the N power. So we get the log of T sub alpha is equal to the log of alpha to the 1 minus N minus 1 divided by N minus 1 times K minus n minus 1 times the log of the initial concentration of A. And again, this won't work if n is equal to 1 because then it will be divided by 0. So we have T sub alpha is going to be equal to minus the natural log of alpha divided by k if n is equal to 1. Another method is called the Powell plot. Here we have R is equal to k times the initial concentration of A to the n. Now we're going to have in this case, a different alpha. Alpha is going to be a dimensionless parameter. So we're defining, just for this Powell plot, alpha is equal to the concentration of A divided by the initial concentration of A. And that's a fraction of A that's not reacted yet. Then we're going to have phi, that's the symbol, Greek symbol phi. We're defining this as K times the initial concentration of A to the N minus 1 power times time, T for time. So for n is equal to 1, phi is equal to k times t. So phi is also dimensionless. So we have the concentration of A divided by the initial concentration of A to the 1 minus n power is equal to 1 plus the initial concentration of A to the n minus 1 power times n minus 1 times kt. And this is if not, n is not equal to 1. 
or we have alpha to the 1 minus n minus 1 is equal to n minus 1 phi. And that's where, again, no, n is not equal to 1. So we get the natural log of the concentration of A divided by the initial concentration of A is equal to minus kT. And that's for n is equal to 1. So now we have the natural log of alpha is equal to minus phi or equal to minus kT for n equals 1. So phi is equal to k times the initial concentration of A not or to the 0 power times t. So it just becomes kT for n equals 1. So for phi is equal to k times the initial concentration of A times to the n minus 1 power times t. So now we have the log of phi is equal to the log of k times the concentration of a to the n minus 1 power plus the log of t. So we get the log of phi minus the log of t is equal to the log of k times the concentration of a, the initial concentration of a to the n minus 1 power. Now this term here, the log of k times a to the, or the initial concentration of a to the n minus 1 power is constant. So if that side is con the right side of the equation is constant, then the left side of the equation is constant. Therefore, the logarithm of phi minus the logarithm of t is constant. Now, since we have um, the logarithm of t, and the logarithm of phi is constant, they can be compared. So we have alpha versus the log of phi. Here we have different curves coming down. So what we have to do is we have to slide a plot um, based on our experimental data over a master plot and see which curve fits. A fourth method is called the initial rate method. This is a good method. So let's say we have A plus B plus C going to different products, one or more products. We're going to say R0 is our initial rate. So the initial rate is going to be equal to K times the initial concentration of A to the alpha power, times the initial concentration of B to the beta power, et cetera, et cetera, to the, um, whatever the last product to that power is. So remember alpha, beta, and gamma, these are the orders of the reaction with respect to each um, reactant. So um, number here is gonna be an experimental number. So we're gonna have, um, oh, experiment number. So we're gonna do the experiment more than once. So we're going to have like rate sub zero for number one is for experiment one, rate sub zero for number two is experiment two, etc. So let's say we have um, experiment number one here. We'll say beta naught to the n number one is equal to beta naught number two, beta or the concentration of B naught. The initial concentration of B number one is equal to the initial initial concentration of C number two. So only um, the initial concentration of A in experiment one is not equal to the initial concentration of A in experiment two. So what we're saying is we're changing only one variable at a time. We're gonna do the experiment twice, but we're gonna keep the con initial concentration of B equal to the same, and we're gonna change the concentration of A to see get the, what happens. So we're gonna divide those two results. We're gonna divide the rate in experiment one divided by the rate in experiment two. So we're going to get k times the initial concentration of A to the alpha power in experiment 1 times the initial concentration of B to the beta power in experiment 1 times the initial concentration of C to the lambda power in experiment 1 and divide by um, k times the initial concentration of A in experiment 2. This is what changed. Times the initial concentration of B to the beta power in experiment 2 times the initial concentration of C to the lambda power in experiment 2. So... What, remember, these are the same, these are the same, this is different. So we're going to get rate num a rate number, yeah. The rate, uh, the initial rate of experiment 1 divided by the initial rate of experiment 2 times alpha, this is the ratio of those two initial um, concentrations to the alpha power. So let's say if 2 is equal to 2 to the alpha, then alpha is going to be 1. So let's say we have 1.35 is equal to 1.65 to the alpha. Then we get the log of 1.35 is equal to the alpha times the log of 1.65. Solving for alpha, 
So that's going to be equal to the log of 1.35 divided by the log of 1.65. That would be 0 0.6. So that would be the order of the reaction with respect to uh, reactant A. Another is called the isolation method. Let's say we have A plus B plus C going to one or more products. So we're going to say the rate is equal to K prime times the initial concentration of A to the alpha times the initial concentration of B to the beta times the initial concentration of C to the lambda. So we're going to say, okay, let's let the initial concentration of A be much less than the initial concentration of B, and the initial concentration of A be much less than the initial concentration of C. So what that means is we're going to, the initial concentration of B to the beta power times the initial concentration of C to the lambda power is roughly constant because those um, reactants aren't being used up. So we're going to say that K is equal to K prime times the initial concentration of B to the beta power times the initial concentration of C to the lambda power. Then we get R is equal to K times the initial concentration of A to the alpha power. This is what we call a pseudo order reaction because it looks like it's a first order reaction or it looks like whatever order we're going to get is respect to one of the reactants, not all of them. And then, for just to find this constant for A, then we can use one of the other methods, half-life method, fractional life method, or the Powell method, to find the order of alpha. And then, of course, you have to repeat that for the other reactants. So then you choose the B naught to be much less than A naught, and B naught to be much less than C naught, so to find the beta, the order with respect to B. So you get R is equal to K double prime times the initial concentration of B to the beta power. And then likewise, you would choose the initial concentration of C to be much less than the concentration of A and the initial concentration of C to must be much less than the concentration of B. And you could do that to find lambda, which is the order of the reaction with respect to C.